Hi, this is Karen Ann Archer and welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to go through the no tan process of a still lot. This painting will be in a two-part video. So toning the canvas on this video and just doing the rubbing out for the no tan and putting in your values of your pretty much your light, medium, and darks. Uh, this is what we're going to be working on. It's a stretch canvas. Actually, I got it from Hobby Lobby, so it's not probably the best quality. Um, it had a painting on it, which I, <laughs> if you're really curious on what the painting was, I had it in my questions and answer video. It's a, this is a 10 by 20, it's an off size. Um, and that's one thing to tell you, starting out painting, don't expect to go and buy the top of the line uh, supplies. Everything you need to get started, you could go to Walmart and start your first painting with what you find at Walmart. If you are choosing to start in oil, like I'm going to show you the process here is in oil, you may need to go pick up jam salt and all that is odorless mineral spirits. You're going to need that to wash your brush and you can also use that as a medium. So, and they have starter oil sets as far as colors. So you can really, and you can get, you could get Walmart brushes. I mean, for your first starting off, start off with your cheaper things, building up better quality products as you go. I have a, went over this with the acrylic gesso. You can get this at Walmart. The only thing I do suggest is if, make sure you are on canvas if it is not primed you need to prime it and a lot of people will use different things this is just something that's really convenient to grab on the shelf i've chose this still life here set up these are things i found in my daughter's room that was very um basic in color because i kind of wanted to stay in the whites and blacks and grays the only thing that really has color is morgan's perfume uh miss dior it has a slight tint of pink to it. I've had this these items out of her room thinking about this uh, still life in this video for a little while now. So she keeps coming back in here and spraying her perfume on herself, giving me kind of an evil look. So I need to get this project done. And uh, so let's get started on canvas. And in this video, all I'm gonna do is use Van Dyke Brown. All you have is any kind of brown and if you want to darken it you can add black to it take your gam saw and you're going to pretty much just mix it into your paint until you get this like runny hopefully i ain't gonna to make too much of a mess all you want it is runny yeah i've got it a little bit too runny i want it thick enough to cover the canvas And one thing, if you're just starting out painting and using the Gamsol, which is a odorless mineral spirits, you still need to have ventilation in the area you're painting because there is a, there is a toxic smell that does come off of it that may bother you. Usually the symptoms I have, if I'm not, if I don't have well ventilations, it will be just like a stomach upset or a slight headache. Not anything major, but there's no sense putting yourself at any risk. So make sure you have that ventilation. And I keep going back into the paint because I've noticed it's really thin and I, I want it pretty dark. So I'm just adding more paint to the mixture to thicken it up. And 
we're going to slightly blob off the extra. And this step pretty much just takes like the brush strokes out. Because you can see all the brush strokes in it. I kind of don't want all those brush strokes. I kind of want it just toned. So I'm just going to kind of pat it out. You can also rub it. Usually I'll rub it in a circular motion because that usually leaves a little bit less distractions. In doing your no tan, we're going to have light, medium, and dark. The canvas now is going to be our darkest dark. So, our middle dark would be... You didn't rub too hard. Pretty much be that color. Now, our lightest color would be if we took it all the way back down to the canvas. And the more paint you remove, the lighter this is going to get. And this is going to be your lightest light. Dark, medium, and light. All we're doing to achieve this, taking a clean brush and dipping it into your Gamsol, rubbing it on there, and removing the paint. When we make a mistake, it's easily fixed. All you have to do is go back. If you've rubbed out too much, you're just gonna go back over it and add your wash back to it. And like I said, there we go. We're gonna start with a very stiff brush. Start with, the wood is representing the table, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that in. You're going to hold your hand back on the brush. And when you do that, Drawing a straight line with the paintbrush becomes very simple. It's just like a swooshing motion back and forth and you get a really good straight line. I'm gonna take my finger in a paper towel. It's a dry paper towel, nothing's on it. And I'm just gonna follow that little line and kind of use that little line we just did to represent where I want our quote table to be. Now at this first part of this, we're just trying to get our basic shapes in. This will be the front edge of the table so we're going to now decide on where the back edge of the table is going to be and I believe here would be great a little bit over this slant is actually going this way We've got this line out here I want to get rid of. So remember, we're just going to go back into this wash and race that little line back out. That's our eraser. You're just adding paint back on it. I want this to be a tad bit thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and put that a little thicker. Okay. When I'm going back and erasing this line, my paper towel's getting dirty, as you can see. I'm actually going to use that to my advantage because I don't, this is not our brightest bright here on the wood and I want it that medium. So all I'm doing is taking that and rubbing out the brightness and put by put just rubbing paint back on it. 
And I don't need these lines to be perfect at this time. And if I'm not satisfied with that, I'm going to take a clean brush, go in a little bit of the paint, and I'm just going to go back and rub in some more paint. But I definitely want to keep it lighter than our background. So I'm just really, notice I'm not re-dipping into the paint. I'm going to get a clean spot on my paper towel. All right. Now that looks good. The ripples of the lace, all I'm doing is I'm going to do jig jaggedy lines. Back and forth moment, motions to represent the folds of the lace. That's all we're going to do right now and decide on where they're going to go. Now I'm kind of going back, taking my head, turning it back to the still life and periodically looking at where it's kind of located. And if you have like drips coming off your paintbrush, just slightly dab it on your paper towel. And I'm pretty much just figuring out where I want all this lace to go. So I know that boundaries of where the objects are laying on the little table. I'm going to dip in the game saw, plot it just a tad, and go back in and put in the rest of the lace that I see. Not worrying about details. All I'm doing is suggesting where the lace is. And if you've noticed when I'm rubbing out and I'm moving the wiggly lines, the lace comes down into a circular motion. So brush strokes matter even at this stage. I'm going in a half circle. Rubbing it. Lace comes down and bunches actually off the table. Just gonna do that there. And we'll go ahead and just decide that. Okay. I'm gonna rinse that brush out, set it aside. I'm gonna take my paper towel, I'm gonna wrap it around my finger, and again, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the brush, but I'm gonna do it with my finger this time. And I wanna do it in upward motions and come around in a half circle, turning my hand as I'm coming around the circle. Again, just implying where that lace is gonna be. And it's gonna come down and drop off the side. When it drops off the side, I wanna make sure I'm straight up and down. And I'm gonna come back to this side and do the same thing, except I'm going to, since my little spot got so dirty, I'm gonna get me a clean spot on my finger with a paper towel and do the same, same thing. I'm starting up here and moving my hand around. Going just in a back and forth little motion. And we're just, again, I've got too much on my paper towel, so I'm gonna move my paper towel, get another clean spot, and remove. At this point, we do want to remove as much as paint as possible because this is your lightest light, of course, because it's the lace. So, let's go ahead and put in this jewelry box. And I want it to live here. And it's a pretty big box, so. All right, I think I'm gonna have this line here. And all I'm doing is putting that gam saw on there. I'm gonna find a clean spot on my paper towel. And just wipe right off the area I just put in. Okay, this side where the ribbon comes down, kind of tilt that upwards. 
These two lines have to go in the same direction. These two lines have to go in the same direction. These have to go in the same direction. So we'll, and we'll straighten up these lines as we go. We're just kind of just throwing them in there at this point. We are just putting in a cube. And now I want to do the top. If you look at the cube, this point here is going to have a point at opposite direction. So we're going to put a point here. And you're going to kind of make sure it lines up like that. Then I'm going to take this point to this point, draw a line. This point to this point, and draw a line. So, or we're, we will keep straightening these lines as we go. So we've got kind of the top. Now let's. Now we're going to go in and put our glasses in. Now our glasses are just circles, so that's all we're going to imply. We're going to take our paintbrush, we're going to use it as a guide. We're going to put it on the bottom and measure across from the bottom of the cube. And it sits about, it looks like about that far from the box. So we're going to start the first circle about right here. So that's our mark for the box. So all I'm going to do is in a circular motion, put in a circle. Remember, I'm keeping my hand back on my long paintbrush and rubbing in a circular motion. As I'm doing that, I'm getting a nice little circle. Now, I'm looking over and I notice the top of the sunglasses is coming just a little bit below our cube over here so I'm gonna stop where that is now these glasses are dark black of course so we're not gonna worry about making it really light the sunglasses come down in like a slanting motion like a slant so I'm just gonna take put it a little bit at a slant just not straight across so we're gonna put this line right here with a little bit of slant all right, you're gonna slant that line. The bottom of the glasses has to have that same little corresponding slant. So the way to do that is you're gonna hold your brush up to the line you just put in. You're gonna take the brush down, line it up with the bottom, put your finger right there, and that's gonna be how big our next circle is for the glasses. So I'm going to kind of just brush that in this way and they're closed up and bring it in this way and the little thing goes down and down. Now this little line here is kind of getting away from me. So I'm going to put that back in. All right, there's our sunglasses. Now let's go ahead and do our next big shape, which this is going to be a little bit easier. Same method we did with this cube is the glass. Now it is in front of the sunglasses and it's also in front of the cube Make it straight across here and just put in a square keep it in mind I'm going back and looking where the bottom of the perfume bottle sits in coordination to the sunglasses and the box you know a little drip right there that this is sitting in front of this now. Going from the perfume bottle to the glasses to see where things are lining up, like where the top of the perfume is versus the top of the glasses, and kind of making sure that those kind of line up. So the top of the perfume bottle kind of does this upward motion up to the bow. Now we're going to go ahead and believe it or not, put in the bow. Not worried about details. Here's the center of the bow. We're gonna just take the brush and push it that way. Moving it straight across. And that is representing one side of the ribbon. Flipping hand so I'm not in your way of view. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna rub out the paint. 
All right, and that's where that other side of the bow is gonna live. Got that done. Now the top of the perfume is again, just another box, just another square. So we rub that out. Now, what I do wanna make sure is that <clears throat> I've got this top squared in the middle of this box. So I'm just gonna do some measurements. I'm gonna check here and just visually see if everything looks good. Line things up. All right. So that looks pretty good. At the bottom line here, and it's not really straight across. So what we're gonna do, go back in our paint, and it's got a little bit of a diagonal here. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that up. We're gonna push that line back with the paint. Instead of rubbing out, we're gonna push lines back. We need to put in the bracelets. And we're just gonna leave them in round circles. So the black bracelet, the black pearls, I'm studying the shape of them how they're sitting. They're going in a little circle like here. So there's the black ones. The gray ones are coming over top of it. In my view, that was in front of the perfume, going up over the black, down over the black one, then coming back. Now, I'm gonna hump here on that, go down, and then I'm going to come a little bit back this way and do a little half circle here to make it apply that it is coming over the other bracelet. So we're gonna need that hump here and a hump here. Then it's gonna come down and around. The reason I know this is I am looking at what I see in my still life. Now, when it comes over this hump, notice it don't quite go far. I'm gonna straighten this line up right here. Going back in the paint. Now I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Get on my paper towel, the front part of the lightest pearls go over here. So I'm gonna make that slight little hump where this is where brush strokes matter. You see, I'm doing a little half circle here. Okay. And it's going to come over this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in these little half circles. There we go. And on the table, it just comes around and it goes back up. I'm wiping off my paper, my paintbrush on my paper towel, and I'm just gonna keep removing the paint. Wipe again, and going back over that. If you look down and your gam saw is muddy looking, don't worry about it. It's not gonna stay clean. And you can check out my other video on how to reuse gam saw. So, all right, it's gonna come down. I'm just barely touch that. And what's right here is where the little clasp is on that one, where it hooks together. The pearls are light, medium, and dark. So this is our lightest pearl. This one is blending in too much to this pearl, so I wanna remove a little bit more of the paint from it, making sure I'm following I'm stopping here. I don't want to go over that pearl here because it's on top. And at this point, I'm not worried about each individual ball of the pearl. I'm just worried about the shape on how the bracelet is laying. So there is a lot of shine off each pearl. So I do not want to leave this one at the darkest dark at this point in time.
we will go back and make it darker when we go to the plain paint. We are just doing the drawing stage. Now, I have to remember as I'm going over this, this is on top of that. So I have to make sure I keep this line clean and I keep that line clean. Where this one is going over top of this one, I have to make sure these lines are clean. And this line goes and stops here. Pick my paintbrush up and come back up here if I'm wanting to work on it. All right. We still have some shine down in here. I want to keep removing paint. I do notice that this pearl bracelet stops at the end of the glass. So I can easily fix that by bringing this outer line out to the end by removing paint. Okay. I'm gonna dry the gamps off my brush. I'm gonna go back up and pick up some paint and I wanna push this line out by adding paint. is a little bit off like this bracelet stops in the middle but I've already kind of liking how I've got it laid in so all I'm going to do is move this bracelet here over just a little this way and the only reason I'm doing this is kind of just giving it a little bit more I guess I think it helps the composition and I'm also too wanting to show you how to move the lines around. I've moved this line out by Maybe. removing paint. Now I'm going to take paint to move this line back over. There we go. I cannot walk off and leave this for 24 hours at this point because this will dry and then you won't be able to rub off any of the paint. So once you sit down and do this no tan stage, as soon as you tone it, you've got probably eight hours because you guys think this paint is so thin it will dry on you and you don't want to dry let it dry but don't worry if you need to get up and go to the bathroom answer the phone take a quick phone call you know let the dog out you can get up and stand and i do suggest getting up periodically standing and walking around you now the paper towels i do use is a viva only because that the viva paper towels do not leave any dust particles getting our table in and all we're going to do is go back and line up our table all i've done is dipped in the gam saw a little bit and i'm just straightening up the table view Now, I do not want to go up and down because if you look at the wood grain, the wood grain goes horizontal. So I want to keep my brush horizontal. The only time I'm going to go vertical is at the end. Get that point, those ends right. And, the re and I'm going, the rest of it, I'm going to make sure I am using my brush straight across. All right, I think that's fine. There's not a lot of color, lightness, or anything down here. It's pretty much in your medium tone. Not really liking the shape on this side. I'm going back into the paint. The paint's getting a little bit dry. Let me loosen it back up a little bit of Gamsol there. And keep eyeballing back and forth. Then I'm just gonna blend this out. I don't want any lines over here. Blend that back out in the background. That's fine. You can take it if you're blend it way back. Now this line here actually disappears. So let's go ahead and erase this line by just adding in some paint. Because what happens back here, it's the table's there, but it's in shadow. 
where you really don't see that part of the table because it gets so dark back in this area. So let's get rid of it. Okay, there. And again, just swish out your lines. The lean distracting lines out there. This is a round brush. I'm going to rinse it and clean it. And I'm going to get a flat brush. And I'm actually going to use my bigger flat brush. This is a size 10. Um, again, if you're using Walmart brushes, just make sure you have flat brushes and a round brush. Make sure you have the flat and round. And remember, my wood grain goes across, so my paintbrush paint is going to go across, even at this stage. So all I'm going to do is go in here. Now I've got too much paint, so I'm just going to rub some of it off. And I'm just going to kind of darken this table back down. Because I don't want this table to be so bright. Because at this point, we're, going, we're paying attention to our lights, medium, and darks. Now I'm going to wipe off my paintbrush. Every stroke I do, I'm wiping off the paint off the brush. And I'm just pushing it to this line. I still know that this line is still there. So I'm just pushing the paint to that line. And when you do this, I'm going into the lace and back out. you automatically start representing the grains of wood. I'm gonna come all the way here and push that way. Remember, I'm not really applying any paint. I'm just moving around the paint that's on the canvas. Now, I do wanna go back in and just slide that line back in, make sure that line stays there. I just don't want this to be a sharp line here. So I'm gonna take from that point, a little bit that way. Pull the paint the opposite direction I was doing just a moment ago by going to that line and pulling. That line and pulling. That line and pulling. That line and pulling. And I'm gonna pull it all the way this way. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off. And if you see now, it's starting to look like a pretty good table. This line may not be exactly straight line. I'm not gonna worry about it at this point. Because when we get to the painting process, we can still move these lines and shift these lines around. Where you just want to kind of have it lined in. Now, I'm going back across and keep pulling this because straightening up. There. So we're going to go back to this side where we see part of the table again. And we're going to do the same thing we've done over here to over here. drying off my paintbrush and removing some of this paint. Keeping in mind, I really don't want to get too white. One of our lace has kind of disappeared. So I'm going to take it around my finger, just as you see me do earlier. I'm going back in here and kind of putting it back. Okay, kind of back in there now. This table back here is a tad bit darker it's gotten a little bit too light, so I'm going back in the paint. And I'm going to put a little bit of paint. I'm not scooping up much paint, just dragging my brush in it. And just going back and adding. Remember, I'm keeping my brush going straight across. Those are the brush strokes we're using right now, just straight across. And if you get back over in this light, you can wipe it off as many times as you want. But it's really dark over here at this point. Actually, it's a little white right here and darker up here. All right, light, lighter part here. Again, just like I'm doing with my paintbrush, I'm taking that finger 
and pulling it in the same direction. All right, I kind of like that. I'm gonna go back down the side. And as for now, we'll leave the table like this. I'm gonna straighten up this little line here. Okay. Now we have a light casting on the lace that runs through here. So all this part of the lace is dark. Now the lace, I'm just gonna do in a circular motion. Just kind of taking my brush in little bitty circles to represent the lace. Try not to get in my sunglasses. Oh, and removing some. Now I'm gonna dry off my paper towel, blend this in there. And you notice at the ends, I just did that same motion around. So anytime I come in here, I have to go back into the same motion cause brush strokes matter. Even if you're rubbing strokes, using your brush, whatever, you keep it going in the same direction. We've already learned the directions we need to go, so let's keep them going. Now, I'm gonna use a little bit smaller brush because I wanna get in here. So, I've gotten a little bit smaller brush. And I'm going to just remove some of this. Now, it's hard to go straight across back in here, so I'm not gonna pay too much attention to it. It's a small area. Do my best on going back and forth. There's some line here. Okay, and the lace back here, I wanna put that lace back in. There's a lot of frillies on the lace back here. I'm just gonna kinda of imply them right now because you can see them right in this area. means we can push that side out. Down here, it gets a really light part on the lace. So the lace is kind of, again, going in a pattern. It's kind of out, so I'm gonna kind of go into this half circle. And I'm gonna wipe my brush. And I'm gonna do this fanning. Back and forth in like a fan, like a fan motion. Slightly turning as I go. And I'm stopping right here on my lace. And what this is gonna do is represent where that lace is going back. It's like I'm going from this point to that point, 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 in a fanning motion. Wipe my brush off. This is pretty light, so I'm gonna continue just doing this process until I get it as light as I want it. So I just switched to a round brush. This may be a little bit easier to do with a round brush. A little bigger round brush. And I'm going into the top of the lace and stopping. And I'm pushing the paint, dry it. And again, I'm still keeping this fan motion. Try not to get up in this bracelet. All right, now, right here, is this line we have to be mindful of. This is the top of the side of the table. Now we want it to look like it's going to fall off. So we're going to keep up and down motions right here because this is where your front view is. So it's gonna be just up and down, up and down. Up and down. And just yeah. wiggle, do this little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle all the way across. And that gives just a slight bit of up and down motion. What that'll do is help with the illusion, all this going back into the distance.
why I know which way to go is because this is my center point. So I know all these lines have to go to about this center point. So when we were fanning, I was fanning in from this point out because this point, this point, I want to lighten this area. So what I'm going to do is think, okay, it has to match that center. So I've went dipped in my gam saw. I'm just blotting out the excess and I'm going to go back and forth like this so I know that goes to the center and remove that. Come back and do a loop right there to making sure that. Now I can go back up into my bracelet, push down a little bit and that removes that. This got up in my line in my bracelet, so all I'm gonna do is go back over my bracelet line. And there, I've lightened that part up. I wanna lighten this area up as well, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Going toward the center point. Now, if your bracelet disappears on you, put it back. And if you have to dip in your damn saw to do that, go ahead if it's not coming in. Now, kind of like lost this line right here. I want to go back and put that in. Back over that hump. Okay. Now. I'm going back in to this one. I'm going to go up and down and just lighten this little area up here. Rub my bracelet back out so we don't lose it. Okay, let's lighten this little area up. This time I'm going to go this way because I'm getting on this side of my vanishing point. So I'm going to rub up and down toward that vanishing point. And I'm going to wipe. It's a little bit of a darker area, so we're going to look like that. Rub back out my bracelet. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. Let's continue over here in this area. Now, it's a little darker over here than on this side, so we're not going to remove as much. Again, I'm going to take my hand up, so I'm going to rub in that toward that finishing point. I'm just not going to rub out as much of the paint on this side. As I'm going down here, I have to keep mindful. I have to turn my hand so I'm still rubbing to the vanishing point. To the vanishing point. Okay. Back and forth. Making sure I'm taking all these lines up to the vanishing point. Wipe my brush. Now, a little bit in front of this bottom line of the perfume bottle is a little bit more up. And the reason I do want to make sure it gets a little bit up because there's this beautiful stream of light I'm seeing right here on the lace. Now, I really do want to get this really light. So, my paper towel is getting really dirty, so let me grab another one. All right, I want to take my finger and really rub that out. That is really a light part. Okay, and it's going to go here. And now, the reason I'm going this way because there's a shadow right here. But I can do this, but I have to go back on this side of this line I just made 
and pull down from the vanishing point. I'm just making a direction line to stop at. Then going back and adding. If that makes sense to you. Where I want to stop this lace. All right. So I'm going to go back and add a little bit of paint right here in front because the lace gets the holes in the lace gets really dark and you can kind of see through it. I'm kind of just going to darken this little area up a little bit. Rinse my brush and I'm going in and just straightening this line up. Just darkening that a little bit through there. Making sure I'm mindful of the line on the table, our pre-existing line. Because we, again, we want to make sure this line is here so we can make the lace fall off the table. Again, keeping mindful of my vanishing point and just rubbing in, making it a little bit darker. And turning and turning and turning. Now what we're doing here is we're pushing this, we've got like a bead of paint. I'm just pushing that out to where I want it. Kind of like in a half circle here. And I might go and make this here a little bit darker. Ooh. At this point, I'm just going in and adding more shaded areas. This is a mechanics tool I found at like AutoZone. I just use it as a mullet stick. I like it because I can bend this mirror and rest it over that. I want to keep my hand up off the paint. I want to take a Q-tip and I'm dipping it into the gam saw. Now we're going to go ahead and put in each little pearl. All I'm doing is kind of circling them out. kind of lay in where these pearls are going to go. This doesn't seem like it's really doing that much, but it'll help us later when we get to painting. We kind of imply little circles here with a pearl. you're going to hear noise in the background I apologize I do have family members you know doing their daily lives we've got the table down let's go back and make sure we got the lace where we want it so we be finished with the lace I don't like how narrow it gets right here I can put my stick down I want it to be a little bit thicker remember my vanishing points here so I'm gonna go up to the bench whoops got a little drip there that's okay rub out a little bit thicker here Going to our vanishing point, and we're gonna fall off the table. Woo! We just fell off the table. There we go, like we're supposed to. All right, I want it a little bit wider here, and push these lines back again here. And I noticed my paint is starting to dry, so I'm gonna have to rub a little bit harder to rub that paint out now that it's getting a little bit drier. Let's 
Let's go ahead and start with the box. These points are at, lining up to our vanishing point. So, I noticed this point and this point is really off. So let's take that back in, see where it needs to go. So it goes here, here, and it needs to stop here. So we have a point here, point here. All these should line up to that vanishing point. So I'm just gonna bring the background in until it lines up. Okay. So we got that line. Rinse my brush. I've had this point lined up, which it looks good. So I'm gonna go up here to this dot. Blend that back up. Okay, is straight up and down. So my point's a little bit off over to the right, so I'm gonna bring that back in, which means this line right here is off. Because I want all these points, this, this point, that point, and this line should line up. Right now it's not, so let's go ahead and put that line back in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just draw a straight line down as a guideline. Put that guideline in, it'll help us out. All right, that's where we want it. So our gam saw, and we're gonna rub this line here out. And this point here needs to be removed. Okay, now since we've done that, there's a little bit of paint right here on that dot. I'm gonna get into that paint and just take it straight down give that corner back this dot here is right Let's hope the box to go up a little bit okay, I'm gonna take from this point to that outer round here to there just bring that back up now box will go down and we need this right here to go to our vanishing point so we're going to go back in the point. Kind of just think there's our line. Let's get in there and get this box straightened back up. It has gotten away from us. Line, and this line has to be the same. So it kind of goes like that. So I'm going to bring it up like this. And again, straight line down here. I'm going back and really fixing up this box into the paint. Bringing it down. A little bit of gamsol. Paint's getting a little thick. Oops, it's runny. Straight down. Here, I'm pushing this box around. I'm trying to get the dimensions of the box I want. I'm just adding some shading back onto the tabletop. Go ahead and put this ribbon in. Deciding the dimensions, put the ribbon in. I'm just working on painting the bow in, deciding on where it's going to live on top of the box. Go ahead and go back into our paint, loosen it up a little bit. Since that is darker than our lace, let's go ahead and put these circles back in in dark. And pretty much I'm going to do the outline of the glasses. So there's a piece inside. The line goes across. I'm trying to get that line back in there. Loosen my paint back up a little bit with some more Gamsol. Taking some Gamsol to remove a little bit of this line back where I want it. We're about some of the details now in the glasses. You can see a lot of the lace coming around. So 
I'm just gonna rub a little bit of that out. Actually, I'm gonna use a Q-tip to do this part. I, ha I did not dip the Q-tip. The reason I didn't dip the Q-tip in Gamsol is because we just applied wet paint. A perfect example, if you get a line in here and it's not right where you want it, I'm erasing this line out. Okay, good. Start over, dip back into the paint. Actually goes down here, barely, and goes down. And this is the uh, part that goes over your ear going down into the glass. Now, that line back on there. And how we're gonna get that to show up. <clears throat> now, since we know the lens of the, it is glass, at this point, I'm just gonna rub out. This part is almost like an illusion. You can see the reflection of the earpiece. Okay. Now we'll leave it like that. I think that's enough to be able to paint it later. This one here, it's gone back and it's actually came down into here a little bit. There's more paint. Okay. You can see it go into this. I've already got some paint on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just rubbing in some middle values with the paint that's already on there. So I'm dip back in the paint, loosen it up a little bit with Gamsol, and the bottom of it has some dark areas. We're gonna go across the top. You see a little bit of the side, so we're gonna straighten back up the side of the, cause it's like a cube as well. Not worried about, now this glass from the Sunglasses are there, so we're gonna make it a little darker to finish off the sunglasses where we see it in there. For this Q-tip, getting my stick back out so I don't mess up my box. And let's do some rubbing out for, let's go ahead and just start on the top, shall we? It's got a line up here and a line straight here. And it goes across. And it comes back to a point there, point there, and a line across. And I'm literally drawing with a Q-tip here, people. Q-tip. Dipped it in uh, Gamsol. I'm gonna rub on Gamsol and then take the flip it, dry side. See how bright I got that? I'm applying Gamsol with the part I dipped in. I'm gonna make a line this way and a line that way. Take my dry side, flip it over. Rub it out. I'm rubbing pretty hard. See how bright that gets? Now I'm just going to continue to do that to get the bow in. Had a clean one. Put Gamsol on the side, dry the side. And the part you spray the perfume with is right here in the middle of this top box. I'm just going to rub it out, flip it over, and put that in. So it's in there. Then I'm going to put a little bit lighter. Okay. Each point and bring it in. Just rubbing it up and down. 
thinking, okay, this is my vanishing point for this little bitty area. So I'm just going to rub it toward, bam, that vanishing point. Just kind of like the middle of the bow. So see how it implied depth right here? Gamsaw side, dry side. I'm going to go down this side and imply a gamsaw in a straight line. Other side, I'm going to rub out the paint. I get some bright flipping back, adding more, and I'm going to rub out some. I'm going to go right here where this front part of it. Okay. Just taking the paper towel to wipe out some of the paint to start the illusion of the glass. Rub it out at a highlight. Now the perfume line where the perfume ends is about right here. This is the level of the perfume. Starting off putting the level on the side of the perfume and just rubbing out highlights on the side of the bottle. Now just rubbing out where the label of the perfume bottle is going to go. Rubbing off a highlight from a reflection from the metal bow. I'm just extending the table out a little bit. I wasn't satisfied on the length of that side of the table. It was a pleasure doing this first part of a two-part series on how to paint in oil. I'm glad to show you today about the no tan process that I do to begin a painting. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions on any other videos you would like to see, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe to support my channel and push the notifications button to get notified of that next video. And as always, keep painting.